This presentation will address the focus question, how have meanings about sport and physical activity changed over time? And if we take a quick look at the syllabus information for this section, you will notice that we're going to be addressing the beginnings of modern sport in the 19th century in England and colonial Australia. And we'll focus specifically on links with manliness, patriotism and character, the meaning of amateur and professional sport, and women's historical participation in sport. At the end of all of this, you'll need to be able to make comparisons between the nature of sport in the 19th century with sport in today's society. We'll begin first by looking at Australia's history and firstly, the fact that the Indigenous Australians inhabited the nation many thousands of years prior to first settlement and that they were involved in many recreational pastimes as part of their way of life. Uh, their environment demanded that they be physically fit in order to partake in activities such as hunting and gathering and cultivating the land. So they were encouraged to participate in a lot of different activities like climbing, jumping and running to help prepare them for this lifestyle. And they also took part in cultural dances and corroborees. And these were highly organised movements that enabled the Indigenous groups to interact with the Dreaming through costume music and dance. Thinking about sport in the 19th century England, it's important to note that by the 1800s, sport in England was very well established and organised. Cricket, horse racing and various versions of football, hockey and golf were all being played regularly by various people, most notably males in the society. Sport in colonial Australia arrived with the first fleet in 1788 and it has been a fundamental element of Australian society since colonisation. And sport in colonial Australia and even today has strong links with Britain. Sport was highly regarded in British culture and establishing a sporting culture in Australia was important to the English to assert their superiority. However, in colonial Australia, things were, were not quite as organised as they were in England. And so the sports took a little while to take hold. And initially, sports like hunting were a popular pastime with new settlers. But eventually, new sports such as cricket, rowing and boxing were brought from the mother country, a, a term used to describe England. The criminal background of much of the European population was reflected in the popularity of more dangerous type sports such as blood sports including boxing and cockfighting and kangaroo hunting. These sports were usually banned but they would often reappear in secret. Sport in colonial Australia took a little while to take off and that's because the conditions in Australia were very harsh. So sport was not very organised and particularly between 1788 and 1850 physical survival was far more important than recreation and sport. But in the 1850s, the gold rush occurred, and that brought much uh, diversity to Australia's population and, of course, greater wealth. And so this meant that Australians were living a little bit more comfortably and they may have had more time for sport and recreation. By the 1860s, sport was becoming far more organised and a characteristic of the unique new Australian environment. For example, in 1861, the first Melbourne Cup was organised and run, and horse racing was one of Australia's first formally organised sports. A number of sporting clubs were also established during this time, and infrastructure was built in cities, so places where the athletes could play and practice to support this sporting lifestyle. And in fact, in 1858, the Melbourne Football Club was established by its founder, Tom Wills. And not long after this, there were a few other clubs that were formed as well. And this started the trend of sporting clubs forming and sports becoming more organised and competitions beginning to be played between regions and suburbs. 
Cricket was well liked by um, many and there were many intercolonial matches that were organised. Cricket was pretty popular in Sydney, and you can see in this image in 1870, a match at Hyde Park in Sydney. The Indigenous population was also involved in cricket, and in fact, in 1868, the first Australian cricket team to travel overseas was actually an Aboriginal team that was made up of stockmen who had learned the game on Victorian cattle stations. Many of Australia's popular sports today have their origins in Britain. For example, the NRL, which began as the New South Wales Rugby League, was a breakaway sport from rugby union in England. Uh, it, originated, it actually originated in the north of England. And AFL, in 1896, AFL was officially formed as the VFL, or the Victorian Football League, but just before that, in 1857, Tom Wills returned from studying in England. And Tom Wills was a good cricketer and rugby player, and he advocated for a winter sport to keep cricketers fit in the off-season. And so they began playing a game uh, that was very similar to the AFL today. In addition, we have modern soccer, which was introduced in Australia in the late 19th century by mostly British immigrants in fact, in 1880, the very first club in the country were known as the Wanderers. And of course, tennis also has its origins in Britain. The first tennis tournament played in Australia was in January of 1880 at the Melbourne Cricket Club and was named the Championship of the Colony of Victoria. And of course, Tennis was very much well-organised and embedded in Britain before this.